Come on, Aaron. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Here we go, and we're going. Mm. Hello, and oh, fuck <laughs> off, you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah go. <laughs> take me to the pilot. Take me to the pilot. Take me to the pilot. Take me to. Can we start this podcast? Are we recording? Yeah. Can you want to put the water down? Right, shall we start? Go. Three, two, one. It's a Football Dad podcast with you and Ingr- What is Turn it? Why are you waiting? Level's too loud, mate. Too loud. Are we ready? Okay. Let's. There you go. You're biting your nails. I know. You, what, you don't need to bite your nails, you're on a podcast. Well, that means I can't bite my nails because they can't see me. <laughs> hey, can we just get this started? Right, let's go then. Credo is the daft of the Football Daft podcast. Is that a good story? Is that a good story? I've got an encyclopedia brain. He's got a damn man nothing. <laughs> Fuck's sake. What are you, a fucking hula? <laughs> this is Football Daft. You're a Rangers man. Aye. Uh, I'm a Hearts man. <laughs> With you and Cameron. I work for Showtime and ESPN. <laughs> and... It's the Football Daft Podcast with you and Grado. Thank you so much for listening and supporting the show. Hello there, Grado. All right, mate. I've uh, got uh, producer John. Hello. He's in the corner. Uh, what a show we've got for you today. Uh, Who Are You is back again. We've got a fantastic mystery guest that Grado knows. Right. You know very well. Sounds. And um, I think you will be very happy with our mystery guest. All right, I do. Because the last couple of weeks you've been like, oh, I love that guy. Oh, right, love you think I'm kidding on? No, because I, sometimes I think you might be pretending. All right, aye. I think the day you'll be genuinely aye, happy. Okay. Also on the show today, the stars of the of the hugely popular show that's touring Scotland right now, singing I'm No a Billy, He's a Tim, part two. We've got Chris Taylor, and we've also got Neil Bratchpiece on the show. And Neil Bratchpiece, better known as the wee man in the comedy circuit. They'll both be in the studio. Uh, we're also going to speak to a Hearts fan and a Hibs fan, who we spoke to last week about the Edinburgh Derby. Good result for the Jambos! Oh, you must be a happy boy. I'm right? a happy bunny. I can't wait to speak to that Hibs fan, Dave, from the Hibs Talk podcast. Anyway, so before we go any further and we get to your rant, which I'm pretty sure I know what it's about <clears> because you've been tweeting about it the last few days, but before we get to that, Mr. Grado, um, I hope you don't mind me uh, dropping you in it. I remember a couple of weeks ago when uh, Tam Cowan was here. Aye. And um, you were waiting on a phone call mm -hmm. about an audition yeah. um, that you did for uh, an ITV drama. Yeah. Can I... Well, I'm just going to tell everyone, you got the part. I got the part, man. You got I... the part and you went down and you filmed it. Mm -hmm. Round of applause for Grado! I mean, I'm proud of you, man. Oh, thanks very much. I know, I know you gonna... can't you can't say too much about the ITV drama. No. I know we, we can t say the program you're no, in. No, I don't. Can we not even mention what the name no, of it is? No, don't. Say nothing. No, I'm But it's filmed, it. done, in the can. No, I'm, so, I'm, I'm, I'm going back down for the next couple of weeks. Oh, you got, you've still got more we'll filming to do? Aye, aye. Oh, right. How's it going so far? It's good, man. F nice folk on it. It's uh -huh. good. It's good to go down to London and all that. Hang about. Watched, watched uh, the football last Thursday night in the hotel. Um, as I say, <laughs> I had my headphones on, and I think that the the couple next to me, I think that they thought that I was either English or I wouldn't be able to pick up Scottish. And uh, I was sitting in the comfy chairs, and they were looking for a seat in a hotel, and uh, they were going, I "Need to wait, wait till I can't go to his bed so we can get his seat." <laughs> I was like, "I can hear you." <laughs> <laughs> Are you Scottish? <laughs> I was like, I'll not be long. There's those 10 minutes left to the football. He thought I couldn't go so we can, he can't go to his bed so we can get his seat. I pissed myself. <laughs> and you outed them that aye, you could hear them. Um, so congratulations, mate. I'm proud of you. And you sent some pictures of you being on set. I'm not going to talk about the costume aye. you were in or how you looked or anything. Can you do your accent from your TV show, Grado? Say that again? Can no. Can you do your accent from your TV show? No. Because you're no Scottish in the TV show, are you? No. So, But you do put on an accent. Aye. Go and do it. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this. Just no, but just just do the accent. Don't, know what TV don't do the show line. Is. You don't do the line from the show. Just do a, yeah. Just be. What, what I mean, you're you're playing an Englishman. Well, yeah, I'm playing somewhere from up north in England. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and I had to hurry back down to. Well, <laughs> oh, should I say to get back to record football daft? So yeah, that's one of the reasons why I got part. So yeah. 
Uh-huh. Like it. I like it. Like so it so, so when you're heading back down, mate? I can't tell you. I can't disclose the dates. Right. But you're heading back down? Aye. More filming? Yes. Yeah. So how long did it take you to get um, that accent just right? Uh, no, in the accent. No long, you, I've you, got need, you need to keep talking in the accent. Well, because what I was doing you was... You need to keep talking in the accent. Well, what I, you need all to right. Keep, Fuck. Well, what I did were, uh, text me mate on WhatsApp. I gave him lines and I says, how do you say this? In that accent, and he texts me exactly what it was, so then I could read it back, and then I managed to input it and put it in there, and that's how I've been working to try and get the accent now for this ITV drama. And uh, who did you watch, or who you inspired? Fred Elliott. I say Ashley, Ashley, <laughs> Ashley, Ashley. I have a gin and tonic for the lady on my right, and one for yourself. And if you're looking for some blood sausage, <laughs> Alberts and Wall Street. Just mention my name. <laughs> It's now time for Strip for Grado. What does this mean? We want you sending your strips so that Grado can uh, collect them and put them on our walls here in our little studio. And uh, we've got a nice wee collection of strips behind you, Grado. Mm-hmm. Uh, what have you got now today? Oh, this one I think uh, trumps a lot. This week's comes for Ian Dingle for Airdrie and he's part of the UK All Diabetic Futsal Team. What's that? Futsal, what's that? It's, um, it's, it's, it's a Brazilian thing. Oh, Right, well, it was set up in 2018 uh, to compete in Europe as part of the diabetes football community. So that's cool because my nephew's got diabetes. I don't know if it's type 1 or type 2. I'm sure he'll, his father will text me, raging that I don't remember, but it's one of them anyway, one or two. Dingy, uh, has been training from for, <laughs> Dingy has been training with him for a while and was actually the first Scottish player to be selected for the team when they competed at the Dia Euro Futsal Championship in Kiev. Oh, in July, so they're trying to get more Scottish people with diabetes involved and are looking to set up their own Scottish team so that they can have a home nations tournament soon. So for more information, you want to get involved, check them out on Facebook and it's TSFC Scotland. So I'm taking us basically aimed that it's got diabetes out there that's listen to the show and they want to get a game of football then there's a place that you can go to tease what do you think of that strip <laughs> what do you think I well, says, this strip trumps them all I wonder why that would be Grado why would this strip trump any other strip you've received so far oh you tell me it's got Union Jack on the front <laughs> 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 uh, thank you so much for sending in that strip. Who's it for again, Grado? Uh, Ian Dingwell. Cheers, Ding. Cheers, Dingy. Much Dingy. appreciate that, mate, and all the best. Thanks for the strip. Perfect. All right, and if you do want to send in a wee strip for us, you know what to do. We could go on at Football Daft Pod on Twitter, or you can get us on Facebook. And uh, if you message there, you can be able to uh, acquire the details and send in your strips, and we'll get it in this studio because we're building a wee man cave here that's looking quite nifty, man, isn't it, Tyler? Grado's Rant It's now time for Grado's Rant I've got a sneaky wee feeling what this might be about Because you've been tweeting about it for the last couple of days uh, Grado, uh, what is on your mind today? First of all, my condolences good there to everybody involved With the demise of Thomas Cook The staff, the pilots, the folk the travel agents I feel sorry for the Waynes But I'm supposed to be turning up to go on their holidays And getting told they can't go um, uh, Doug Boy's here booked a fucking Thomas Cook flight, didn't I? Oh, when? F- first day, last first day. <laughs> what? Aye. All the chat was about... Well, it started on Wednesday and I thought, there's no way this is going to happen. And so, so you- I got a good flight to Cyprus, <laughs> not over, and I booked it. And obviously, Dafty here is obviously, do you know what I mean? Raging. Um, <laughs> right, so wait, wait, right. <laughs> no, mate. right. So all the talk, all week... <laughs> Was it they needed two hundred million pounds? I, I didn't see that at first. Did you say they were in a bit of bother? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it was two hundred million. I would honestly. So what's your rant? Fucking Jet Two putting the prices up. I think it's disgusting. Oh, you and, your target is this, Jet Two. My, 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 my target is Jet Two, and every other airline that's decided no. You know, there was a flight yesterday morning that was at two hundred and three pounds for the exact same flight. I said, "Will I? Will I know?" Later on that night, it turned to five hundred pounds. I think that's disgusting Cashing in on folks misery There's families out there That are trying to sort something out Trying to get alternative flights Jet to are sending out emails Going oh hey Come with us Book with us in confidence That is an absolute disgrace Stick your jet to your Everybody else that's done that Right up your farter They will not be getting any of my business because there have been so many people affected by this. Wayne's staff, travel agents, and this is just rubbing salt in the wounds. And I think it's absolutely disgusting. I also think the government, and I've ken nothing about politics, right? I don't, and I don't like to get involved in politics, but I really think an old traditional um, 
company like Thomas Cook should have been saved because they're going to spend millions on getting all these folk that are abroad stuck. That's going to cost some hundreds of millions, millions of pounds anyway. Million. And the knock-on effect of this is going to cost millions and millions and millions and millions. I know that it's their own fault for getting there in the first place, but I think something should be done. It was a sad sight yesterday morning as I flew in for Gatwick Airport into Glasgow and I saw all the Thomas Cook planes on the parked away with snow plows on them in case somebody jumped in and bumped one. <laughs> No, because that's honestly what it was. Because I come off and I says, what's the deal with the snowplow? She went, that's in case somebody steals them. Do you know what I mean? In case one of the pilots has got the keys to it and goes, fuck that, I'm off, I'm taking it. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> that could happen, you So don't you're know. pissed off with other airlines who took advantage Aye. of people's situation. This would have been a nice situation to go, look, guys, here, everybody affected. Let's kind of, you know, here's some fair prices, but instead of trebled the prices, and for that, you should all hang your head in shames. I'm absolutely disgusted, and for that reason, I'm out. Sorry, I've just been watching a lot of Dragon's Den. <laughs>It's a Football Daft Podcast with Ewan and Grado. You don't always need to say it's a Football Daft Podcast. Folk know what they're listening to. People this. are fast forwarding. But they're still listening to the same thing, mate. You're no in a motor listening to a radio show. You need to get that out of your head. And leave this in or not. He didn't he listen to the Football Daft Podcast. Don't need to keep saying that, mate. Just go on with the next point. Right, I want this bit Eddie to do it by the way because No you don't No I don't Don't edit it out You're chastising me On Ch the show I'm are You are It's cause you're, you, you're No You're I still just, in that it's Mate you're not Clyde too. You're mate, not Clyde mate, too. Mate, 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 listen. You're not Clyde too. Right, well here's the, here's the thing right Right go Right Why did Coca-Cola Keep turning up on telly Why did Coca-Cola Keep turning up on the radio Why do you keep seeing brands Constantly being mentioned why do you keep seeing brands on billboards? Why do you keep seeing them in newspapers, on mobile phones, on laptops, on computers? Right? It's because it's brand awareness. When I say football daft, it's brand awareness. It's to get it into people's memories, into their psyche. This is football daft. You only want me to mention it once. People may be listening. Forget who we are. This is football daft. You fucking like it or lump it, I like it and I'm going to keep saying it. Fucking mean you outside now. <laughs> Right, let's, hey, look, let's go. Let's look back at some of the results from the weekend there. Uh, Great, just give us your thoughts on these mm. games. Uh, Livingston nil, Aberdeen two. A couple of goals for uh, Aberdeen. Andrew Considine and Sam Cosgrove with a late penalty, uh, giving Aberdeen a much needed victory away to Livingston on that shitey plastic pitch. Thoughts? Uh, well, we play Livingston, but by this time it's probably been done because it comes into Thursday. So hopefully, um, Rangers have won that game. I can't really think anything else to know Aberdeen lose. And, um, Johnny, are you still pissed off with me because I had a wee pop at you there? No, I'm just trying to think what I have to say about Livingston getting better. Him I just need one line. Right, let me think. Give a line for Livingston Aberdeen. Aberdeen winning 2-0. What's your line? A word, a line. It don't need to go into great detail. So what are you thinking? Mm, Tony Macaroni mm, 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 I love you mm, 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 Tony Macaroni mm, mm, Gonna have it for my tea Because mm, mm, mm. that's where Livingston play their games The spaghetti had, as they call it The spaghetti had <laughs> You never heard that? <laughs> no, I've never heard of that oh, no. uh, Motherwell 1, Ross County 2 St Mirren 0, Hamilton 0 <laughs> St Johnston nil, Rangers four. Bad first half, good second half. Celtic three, Kilmarnock one. Uh, got hard on when Kelly were up one nil. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, Hibs one, Hearts two. Uh, I'm well, I'm happy for you. Thanks, mate. Uh, talking points in Scottish football, there's only one big talking point. Uh, Gary Caldwell got the heave-ho at Partick mm -hmm. Thistle. And uh, Ian McCall has walked out in there, who are top of the table, or who were top of the table until Dundee United got a late win Aye. against uh, Arbroath. So Ian McCall has left air to take over at Partick Thistle, and he's brought back Alan Archibald. That's bizarre after he's left, after, you know, a year I know. back. It's weird, isn't it? Like, Aye. how does that work in terms of... It's a good team, though. What do you mean? What? As a management team, uh, good yeah. coaching team. How do you know that? Well, Ian McCall... So it was, was Archibald his second when Ian McCall was at party? Yes. Right, okay, yes. right, right. What's Archibald done for the year? Picked his hoop. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and that's the big talking points of Scottish <laughs> football. <laughs>It's the Football Dad Podcast with Ewan and Grado. Big weekend of Scottish football with hearts taken on Hibs at Easter Road. And I'll be honest with you, I went into the game with a bit of apprehension. I didn't think that hearts would get the victory. I thought, at best, we might scrape a draw. But there you go. Young Aaron Hickey, aged 17 years of age, um, pops up with a winning goal for a 2-1 victory after being 1-0 down. And last week, we spoke to a couple of fans. And we've got the hearts fan... Uh, standing by. Uh, hello there, Ross. All right, you and all right, Grado. How you doing, my man? You happy, Jamba? Um, well, I'm kind of, I'm a bit in between at the minute. I'm not sure how this is how this is panning out because I've never really had this before. Every every time we've had a derby win, I've always been kind of over the moon and dead excited about what's coming. And now I'm just a wee bit. Are we in for another let down? Is this just going to be a high followed by another couple of lows? But when Hickey put that ball in the back of the net, I was in that much shock, I never moved. <laughs> and I didn't think I moved until after I'd seen it about four times. It was, so, it, was, it, was a, it was a sensational strike from the young lad. And on the, on the basis of the second half performance, when Hearts got the equaliser, there was only going to be one winner. We were winning that game, Ross. There was oh, no I, doubt about I mean, it. The, Hips the, were shell the shocked. They were the gone. Copper behind the goal was was enough to say. Oh, I did you see that the policeman? <laughs> he, 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 he put his horn up, then he shut his cell, realised where he was, and <laughs> I think, kept I think walking. Realized, oh, shit, I'm working, and I've, I've got to be able to. <laughs> uh, so, so Ross, last week you were saying that you would take a, a defeat to Hebs, and we, you'd probably welcome a defeat to Hebs just to get rid of Craig Levine. Well, well that, that's that's not happened now, Ross. What's your thinking now? Well, I mean, now Craig's no for leaving. <laughs> see what you've done there, you. So, um, I think it's, it's kind of said in the paper uh, Saturday or Sunday that um, if he got to fourth, he would he would be in a, a position where he would happily walk away. Um, and after that win on Sunday, we're now eighth. So technically, we've only got one game. If we win that one game, we might get rid of him. But I think it'll only be for him to go up the stairs. I don't think it's going to kind of leave the club. Aye. Uh, so are you are, are you a happy jambo or is there still a wee bit of a sour taste in the mouth because Craig Levine is still the manager because you believe he's not the man to take us forward? Um, in respect to winning the game, I'm a happy jambo because we've put them back in the wee box. They're, they're all quiet again. Mm -hmm. They're back where they belong. <laughs> um, in reflection to having him as the manager, uh, no. So your opinion hasn't changed on Levine? No, really, because, I mean, the evidence for the first half wasn't giving me any kind of hope for any future games. Ike Piazzo was on the radio and he said, basically, look, it's no Levine's fault, it's her fault, we've no played for the team. He's we've no played for that. the manager. Of course he's going to say, you're never going to shout your manager out oh. in, in public, are you? You're never going to have a pop at the manager in public. Good point. That comes when the manager leaves. So, Ross, before we let you go... Mm hmm Craig Levine, he's still in the job. You're not happy with that. Delighted that Hearts beat Hibs on Sunday. You put them back in their wee box. Fantastic. Good with that. Um, what are you thinking going forward? Where do you think we'll ultimately finish under Craig Levine? Because, as you say, he's going nowhere. I think um, at a push, we're going to be... Seven. <laughs> and without Levine? Fourth. So Levine Fourth still needs top. to go. Um, I'd like to see him go. I, I think he's he's kind of he's lasted his, his kind of course. He's no got the um, he's no got the staying power. He, he's too sporadic. The, a, a win and a derby is all right, and it's all very well and good. However, covers the cracks. Aye, it covers the cracks basically, and you can't cover the cracks any bigger than beating your biggest rivals, can you? I mean... Mm. Well, so, the, so, so so that's your thoughts on Harris. Uh, before I let you go, um, we've clearly got you on FaceTime for those of you who are not watching this on YouTube or listening to the podcast so we can see Ross and he's yeah. wandering about and I don't know where you're wandering about but you're an Edinburgh boy wandering yeah. about where? Clyde Bank. <laughs> Why are you wandering Clyde Bank? Because that's where I work with Radio Clyde. Because um, my wife decided that she wanted to stay closer to her mother is that, is, that is, that, is that the mother? Is that the mother? I know what you're saying. <laughs>
<laughs> Ross, uh, give my best to your family, mate. I'm no doubt we'll speak to you again throughout the course of the season. I will do. Um, I've got a wee idea for a feature that you could use, though. Right, go on, go. then. What have you got? See how you, you, you had um, Bobby for Scott Squad in last week? Mm -hmm. Aye. You could get me go around all the weird kind of grounds, and uh, your feature could be, where's the Bobby? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. Aye. Aye. Yeah. Like and then that. we guess, so it's like, who are you? It's at which stadium is it? Aye. Aye. Where's the Bobby? Where's the Bobby? Love it. I like that. Right, starting soon. Here Cheers for that, Biggie. Cheers, Ross. I'm commission for that, though. No, you get, <laughs> you, 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 you get time. <laughs> You're getting screen time. <laughs> hey, Ross, keep my best to the family. Lovely talking Aye. to you all. See you Cheers, later, Ross. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Cheers, bye -bye. Cheers, mate. Bye. Cheers. Hey, Trish, we've just spoke to Ross, a Jambo fan, very, very happy. We're now speaking to a guy that might not be as happy as what Ross was. We are speaking to Dave, who was on last week, great guest. He's uh, the podcaster of Hibs Talk. Hibs Talk Podcast. Hibs Talk Podcast. So, Dave, your face is tripping you. Can you explain why? <laughs> <laughs> My face is always tripping me, to be fair. But, <laughs> nah, that was murder, wasn't it? Well, especially Absolutely. if you go... Good, good. Look at how happy you is. Look at him. Well... Can you blame him, mate? I mean, come on, there's nothing worse, especially in a derby game when you go one all up and then you not only throw away fucking two points, the full three. You must be scunnered, son. No, uh, I, was, I wasn't very chuffed, no. But it was the weirdest thing. Like we, When we went one all up, we all started singing, like, you're getting sacked in the morning to Craig Levine. <laughs> and every single one of them, to a man, the Hearts fans all joined in. That's and funny. It was the weirdest thing I've ever experienced at a game of football. It was brilliant. <laughs> then uh, it flipped completely. Like Then you started singing it to us, and then we all joined in. It was uh, So bizarre. the full stadium sang that? That's brilliant. The whole stadium <laughs> sang it to base managers at two separate points. So, so it's, it's, it's the only time that Hibs and Hearts have been united as one. Uh, it did. It, it did feel weird. It was like I think we both felt sorry for each other. <laughs> <laughs> um, now let, let's look back at the game, the glorious game at East Road. The Hearts won by two goals to one. You come out in the second half, and Steely, Stevie Mallon does what he has done so often, playing for Hibs. I think that's eleven goals that he scored of his fourteen outside the box. Um, stunning strike. You can't take it away from the boy, and it was a, a goal to win any game. But then, what happens, Dave? What what can goes wrong for Hibs after you score that goal? We just sat off. We right. just let you get back in the game. And I, I compared it to like a boxing match. Like when you when you hit somebody with a blown box, and you then just stone off them. If they're on the ropes, you go, you keep going at them. But we didn't. We just sat we let back. you just get back into the game and leave Levine just completely outclassed Heckenbottom, which is concerning um, by tactically just completely outclassed us. I mean, here we are on a Tuesday recording the podcast and you still look as and sound as miserable as um, as you did when we spoke to you last week ahead of the game. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> what happens now? I mean, I my, my mates were like, oh, what are you going to say in that? And I was like, I have nothing. Mm. <laughs> I'm just going to go on and take a scalping and then come back <laughs> off and get back to work. <laughs> well... well so 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 obviously this has happened at the weekend. You weren't a fan of Heckenbottom last week. How has your opinion changed <laughs> over the weekend with Heckenbottom? Is it now a matter of get him out now or is there still a wee bit of you still got a wee bit of belief that you can turn it around? No, I want him out the now like it'll not happen. He'll stay there's an international break in a couple of weeks, he'll get the next three games and then then they'll see what happens. But we're notoriously tight when it comes to money. We've probably spent a lot in sacking Lennon. And then there's no many football clubs that got a bit bought over by a billionaire than go absolutely tits up like oh, we have. So you're still looking a bit down. You're looking a bit depressed after the result at the weekend there. Is there anything that Grado can do for you to cheer you up? Because he, he does have a pretty good voice. Is there a song or is there something he can do for you to cheer you up? Put a wee smile on your face, Dave. It can do Ian Crocker, uh, the the cup final when we won the cup. Don't be doing it, bro. David Gray's header against Rangers in the cup final. Could nah, you do no that? No, that. No. Why no. not? That would that would because that. I remember exactly where I was. I was driving down to Liverpool to wrestle in the afternoon, and when that happened, it was basically one of the worst. But, but Davis sitting there really upset, and he needs <laughs> cheering. And up. David Gray has put hips. It looks like it's in the bank for hips. Well, it wasn't even Derby Day, so I can't use that, was it? it was 
This is good. But did you notice the crocker? Start, was... start again. Right. So do it for Dave. Go on, David Gray, bullet header to win the cup final for Hibs since the, since 1902. There's your information. Right. And there comes, and there's David Gray, his bullet header into the back of the net. That is sensational. Hibs are on route to the first trophy since 1902. That not good, no? Dave? That'll do. He's paraphrased <laughs> a wee bit. <sighs> But by the way, did you notice that Ian Crocker has been getting was was getting tweeted all weekend because of the amount of times he was saying Derby Day, and folk were going, "You, you fucking sound me like Redder than you sound me like yourself." <laughs> <laughs> um, so for you, is the season up? Is that done for well, you? Well, they're not going to win <laughs> the league, are they? No, but I mean, in regards to what your hopes and ambitions were in the summer, is that your season done? Are you? Is that gone? No, a cup run. That's all we can do. And I've got to come on it tomorrow night and I have absolutely no idea why I'm going. Probably a pie <laughs> yeah, and an Empire Biscuit. The Empire Biscuits are apparently decent. So. Yeah, are they? Oh, because it'll be isn't it? Brownings Empire Biscuits. I do that. I get an Empire nah. Biscuits on. Um, so Dave from the <laughs> Hibs Talk podcast, um, it was it was brave of you to take the call today because I didn't think you'd pick up the phone. So it's been nice to talk to you and uh, get it right fucking up you. <laughs> Thanks very much. Cheers, David. Thank you, pal. Bye bye. Uh, it's now time for Who Knows Wins, and it's the home of social betting and are changing the culture of gambling. Now, books have been taken out of the equation here, which is really good news. This is good fun. And now you can bet on sports against your mates. So you can get all your mates together and you can get involved with Who Knows Wins. It's a brilliant way to rake in the cash from your pals and also uh, get the bragging rights uh, by getting it right up there while having a bit of banter along the way. Uh, there's no odds, no bookmakers. There's also um, loads to do in regards to predicting on sporting events. It doesn't have to be football. It could be anything. And there's so much more to win having a bit of a, a, a bit of banter with your pals, getting involved with your pals, and you're in charge. You're in charge at all times. Uh, download the app now on the Apple App Store or on Google Play. And for more information, visit the website, which is uh, who knows wins dot com. You then just have to set up a leak and set an entry fee. So it could be a fiver, could be a tenner, could be fi- whatever you're 70 comfortable grand. with. Seventy grand. Seventy grand. You're setting a a, a, a fee of well, seventy if grand. You're, if you're maybe maybe if Dragons Den. Theopathetus, on the other hand, has decided against a 70 grand buy end on who knows wins.com. <laughs> now, the don't get by that. You want some more money? You want some more money? I'll tell you, who knows when you want some more money? I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> the you're, pers- fake, you're fake laughing. No, it's just quite giggly. <laughs> uh, it's quite giggly. <laughs> uh, the person with the most correct predictions wins the pot of money. So if there was all of us here at the Football Dad podcast show that got involved, they say there was 10 of us, and I set a limit of a tenner each, mm-hmm. winner takes all. Yes, or we all just collect the money together, go to Amsterdam and get one home. <laughs> You can also join preset public leagues with larger pots of money competing against players from all over the UK. So get involved now by downloading the app on Apple or Google by typing in who knows wins. So uh, we're going to be setting up a wee league here at the Football Daft Podcast. So let's quickly go through some of the fixtures for the weekend. Hibs Celtic. Ah, Celtic up on Hibs. Hamilton Hibs. Not in each. Hamilton Livingston, sorry. Not in each. Come on at Ross County. Not in each. Rangers Aberdeen. Two now Rangers. St. Johnson Motherwell. Not in each. St. Mirren Hearts. Not in each. For all the information you need, go to the website at who knows wins.com. It's the Football Dad Podcast with you and Ingredo, and we're delighted to have with us, live in the studio with us today, two of my favourite people I've known for such a long time, and I'm surprised that that one of them is sat here with me today involved in a football show that he's touring Scotland with, because he fucking can't he stand football, <laughs> and we've got Neil Bratchpiece, one of the worst names ever in the world of show business. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and we've got Thanks, you and one of the worst faces in show business. <laughs> well, and I'll see how you went on the radio. <laughs> and we've got Chris Taylor as well, who Heard are it. from Singing I'm No a Billy. He's a Tim Two, the sequel. Uh, good to have you in with us, guys. For good those of you who are wondering who Neil Branch P says, you might know him better as the Wee Man. 
And I'm no surprised you've changed your name to the Wee Man because Bratch Peace is some <laughs> name, by the way. Yeah, it's just, uh, I, I think I'm the first person in show business to uh, kind of hide their Jewishness by making up a <laughs> stage name. I've not looked into it, but I'm pretty sure I'm quite unique in that way. Like. Are you Jew? Are you Jewish? 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 You're asking if I'm Jewish, you just went, are you Jew? <laughs> <laughs> I feel I'm watching The Great Escape or something. What's <laughs> happening? <laughs> I didn't realise you were Jewish. I'm Jewish. Jewish, that's the right way. Aye, right, but it's the, it's, the, it's the age old saying, you know, are you a prodigy or are you a Catholic? <laughs> <laughs> you're, jo- you're joking, but you did ask me that one. <laughs> did I? It does not surprise me. <laughs> Grey don't actually ask you that question. No, he did, no. And what was your answer? I'm a, I'm are you a prodigy? I'm a prodigy. Are you a prodigy? Before we get to Chris, because Chris has got quite a boring name in Chris Taylor, but you're Neil Bratch piece. And when I first met you, I struggled to announce you when I was interviewing you on the telly. I didn't know how to say that, that name. Right. Have you found that throughout your career when you're being announced on stage doing stand-up or yeah. that people struggle with your name? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's de- there's definitely a reason I call myself the wee man, which is easy to say and remember and spell. Like, uh, it was a while ago, actually, I was hosting a gig up north somewhere, like, or Broth or something like that. And the poor lassie went on stage. I think we had a note in my, main, in my name and said, uh, please welcome to the stage, Neil Ringpiece. <laughs> like that. So I basically, I just called myself Neil Ringpiece for the rest of the night. It's, uh, I should you get there now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's my S&M done. name. That's, my, that's for the dark web. That's what my name is there. <laughs> This smart. is a football daft podcast, and it's weird having somebody on the program who hates football with an absolute passion. That's not true. Well, it is, it's true. It's that. very true. And we'll, we'll get to that in just a second, <laughs> but we've got to say hello to Chris Taylor. Hello, Chris. How are you doing? You, uh, right? you two are working together for the sequel to um, I'm, I'm Singing I'm Noah Billy, He's a Tim. It's it's number two. And so. it's, it's a completely different show to the show that I loved. It is. It is. The, the two shows stand alone, obviously. It, it, it carries on from the first one. The first one that Billy and Tim, they make a bet, they're locked in prison, and they make a bet, and they talk about how you can tell if someone's a hun mm-hmm. or a Tim. Mm-hmm. Like you can tell Grado's one. You, you know straight away, <laughs> right? Like you know, right? you leave your yeah. blueprint right there. <laughs> <laughs> no, and that's what they joke about. They joke about it. Because we say in it that, oh, and it, it's a joke, right? It's one of the lines in it that all oh, Rangers fans will all get wee fat necks and all that. No. Well, I've got a big fat neck. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's because you love them even more, pal. <laughs> so, uh, so, I'm a bigger Rangers fan then for that. So, <laughs> so I, the, this one it follows on to that. They talk about its genetics that you can tell if you're a Rangers fan or a Celtic fan. And funny enough, when I met Des Dillon, he's like, I met him in a chippy when I first went to kind of part of the show. I met him halfway in Gurdon in a chippy and I was skint. Sold my telly so I could get a car hire to go and meet him. Bought my chicken supper. Believe it or not. Ah. <laughs> so uh, you know, he, right. he thought I was loaded. So he told me, he was like, ah, you're Catholic? I said, no, no, I'm Protestant, mate. He's like, no, you're a Catholic. I was like, no, I'm proud, but then I went to the job, so I went, aye, oh, no, I might be, then might be. Got up the road and says to my mum, I did thought I'm Catholic. She went, aye, yeah, your grand's a Catholic, but your papa was a prod, so she just gave it up and went to prod to keep him happy. <laughs> so you can tell, so it's all about genetics, and, and they say that you can tell. So, so you are actually Catholic? I'm Catholic, aye, apparently. Right. Aye, so I was... Prod brought up all life. Well, you know, brought up a Rangers fan anyway. Too, well, we'll get to this. We'll get to this. I knew you'd be fucking quick to say that. I should just say that. Bitch. I'll bring that up. <laughs> you were a Rangers <laughs> fan at primary no, school. No, no, no. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. So I, they, they make a bet in the second one to see, they swap shirts to see who can last the longest in each other's end. All right. To, and somebody scores and they both get a doing. So they end up in Hamden treatment room and they're locked in there for 90 minutes. So it's similar to the first one that they're both locked in an enclosed space. Right. And you've got the nurse who's for Poland, who's trying to keep them to shut the fuck up all the time. And then you've got this ghost who appears on a mission for God, and he's got to get two bigots to give up sectarianism, or the guy that's been stabbed outside the ground dies. <gasps> right. so Great story. Uh, Good fun. And as soon as we find out somebody's been stabbed, the first thing Billy and Tim say at the same time is, what side? And it's like, why the fuck should that matter? Yeah, why, right. why should that even yeah. matter? So that is a big message. It's one of the funniest shows I've ever been involved with. It's just farce, but then right at the end, we smash you with a punch in the heart. And really? We've had stand innovations every night. We've had grown. We were in Bathgate, right? And I looked down, and there's this big guy, and Ulster tattoos, the lot, shaved teeth, laughing in the front row, and we're doing this really emotional bit, and I'm thinking, I'm fucking raging at that. And then I look closer, he was, he was sobbing. Really? He was actually sobbing into his shirt, crying, aye. So there's a lot of the folk come after it and say, oh, we're just a 90 minute bigot. And all that, and it's, it's, it's opening all eyes. I mean, it's never going to fucking save sect- 
cures the dictarian or something like that. But it gets folk thinking. But, but it gets people talking. Aye, aye. And, and, that, and, 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 and that's what I've heard. I've, I've yet to see the show. But what I've heard is, is it's got people talking. Aye. And because aye. there is a message in amongst the comedy. And there is, as you say, that big punch that kind of gets you towards the end of the it, show. It really does. It makes you kind of have a look at yourself. You're even doing it. Do you know what I mean? Because we're all... Night like, after night when you do it, you still feel it. You still feel it. It's the most amazing feeling coming off and people coming up after you and cuddling you and seeing Rangers and Celtic fans kind of having a, having a go at each other at the start with some banter, but then leaving, chatting uh, away at each other. Yeah. It is, it's do, an amazing... Do you ever need to go, right, calm down? We no, but we had one <laughs> night at a theatre, right? And uh, I'll no mention the theatre, right? But it was the outskirts of Glasgow and Neil's coming on, I'll let you tell him what you said, but yeah. first act was amazing. Boom. You know, what is it you call it in wrestling? You feel the heat. Right, you're good. Right, right, oh, good. Amazing, mate. So... We went off the interval buzz and came back on and then you just hear a wee bit of something's going on. Something's going on. But then it got bigger and bigger. Neil's doing this monologue. So Neil, it, we couldn't get through the show and the audience would get around. So Neil... I had to turn into this wee group and go like that. Fuck up, I'm monologuing here. <laughs> 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 it's no Hamlet, but you still need to listen, you cunt. <laughs> <laughs> so then everyone's clapping, clapping. And then it went quiet and then again it kicked off. But then this guy eventually gets kicked out. And what had happened was apparently, they were loving the show. It was nothing to do with the fitpa. Some guy's trying to get back into his seat in the interval. Uh. He spilt a tiny bit of his drink on this lassie's new top, right? pre marked top, right? <laughs> <laughs> so she starts nipping at him and he's like, going to shut the fuck up. There's a show in, but she won't shut up. So he's went through at the bar and he's got a full pint. He sat down and went there, fucking moan about that. And he's <laughs> really? <laughs> Shut it all over her, all over her eyes. And then she's getting launched it. Uh. So then we just crack, crack on. But I was so proud, man. The cast just, just cracked uh. on with it. Well, that could happen yeah. anywhere. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I could, anyway, that I could happen at Hamlet. You know what I mean? Good, good. It's nothing to do with the fat bar. It was just to do with <laughs> Just people having a good time. Too much to drink. Saturday night. <laughs> I mean, I, I presume this will go back on the road at some other point. It's already, it's going down that way. We've got other theatres approaching us and we're going to go back out again March, April. Oh, is that time. how it works? So then theatres could go right about a bit of this. Has the pavilion taken it yet? No, no, it's, it won't be going to the pavilion this time around. The pavilion's doing a lot of their own kind of football shows that I think they've been yeah, really successful. Right, yeah. So I, I think I think they'll be kind of... <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll be kind of like, ah, we're in one of them, you know? So, um, no, I mean, you never say never if it was something they wanted. But obviously, we're looking to get into a bigger venue now. Uh, it's because been, word it's been is set, out there. Aye, and it's been selling out. I think these days, people don't want to go and see something unless they see a trailer for it. You know, I waste your right, money. Aye. Especially a sequel. Yeah. So, it's that... I had that second album syndrome and I wasn't even involved in the fucking first one. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so, it was... But it, it's been going great. We, we, we have directed it this time round. Um, we got a lot of laughs the last time and it wasn't just about the laughs. So, we, we've rejigged it a bit. Des's writing's phenomenal. And now we get a punch at the end, so it's definitely getting folk talking. And Neil, you are not a football fan, as I've already alluded to. You can't stand football. The first thing you said to me when we got in here to do the podcast was, is, don't ask me about football. <laughs> I'm not interested in football. <laughs> but here you are involved in what is football. It's a football yeah, show. He's got good stories. Of, he's got some stories that some football fans would have loved to have happened to yeah. him. Who's yeah. not made you? <laughs> Shell suit, <laughs> Bob. Right. <laughs> 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 Uh, nah, I mean, like, I'm not a football fan, but I wouldn't say, like, I carry standard. I'm not one of these people that, like, I, I detest its existence and all like that. Like, right. I, I used to be, like, I was a big football fan when I was a kid, and then I kind of drew it. I don't so, <laughs> well, you're a big football fan as a kid. Who were you a fan of? I'm a Motherwell fan still. I was brought oh. up in Motherwell, so I'm still, I still, you know what I mean? I follow them on Twitter. That counts as a Motherwell <laughs> fan. <laughs> <laughs> I keep up to date with them. They're in the league, they're the, fourth. The big question is, do they follow you back? They fucking don't. <laughs> 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 I would like to make that known that I'm quite upset by you that. You did a half time draw or something like that, come on. Exactly. <laughs> They're not even asking for the half time draw. No. They're not even following you on Twitter. That's a disgrace. Mm. Yeah, I think it's time to go to Hamilton, New Hamilton Park. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You, you didn't know that they're rivals, eh? <laughs> who, who's, who's, I know that much. Who's the manager at Motherwell just now? Oh, that'll be your. Uh, I think it's uh, that's Alex Ferguson. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Close. Uh, I'll tell you who it is. John right? and Watson plays him in that hang. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's the name of a diluting juice. Mm -hmm. Oh, big, um, big Jose Kiora. <laughs> 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 Okay, and he's done well, by the way. See with, see with the young team that's coming up. See with the young team that's coming up. Big Kiora, man. So I say he's too orangey for Crows, but I disagree, man. Uh, well, you know, they're the last time they won a cup. I was, I was there at 1991. I <laughs> was it? Well done! Yeah. Was, was Cooper still playing with Mother? Was he playing at that time? No. Yeah, I think he was. I 3 2 against Dungeon Are you United. educating Grace yeah. on football? I know. Yes. Uh, Mother will up to about 1992 or 3, I can tell you really? stuff. Aye. 
<laughs> when wow. I think when I, Tommy Coyne and all that, I was a Oh, there you go. Oh, hey, do you know what I said? Hey, uh, when I was in 1995, when I went with my mum and dad to in the Hotel Samos, the Motherwell players were there on their uh, holidays. So I was with Willie Faulkner, Brian Martin put me in the pool, Owen Coyle was there. Brian Martin put you in the pool? Flung me in the pool. He you flung you in the pool? Were you doing his nothing? What? Were you doing his nothing? Of course. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How old were you? I was about eight, man. And eh? he, he chucked you in the pool. Ah, I was as big as I was, what well, I'm on now. <laughs> you know what I mean? If I start picking up an eight year old stranger and throwing aye, you in the pool. You think about it. You think about it, aye. aye, aye. Bit off. So uh, I'm surprised at your knowledge of Motherwell. So um, point, kudos right. to you, my friend. Thanks. And there is a message to Motherwell Football Club or anyone from Motherwell who listens to this show. Go and follow the wee man. That wee man, at that wee man on Twitter. At that wee yeah. man Get him on, on Twitter. At halftime half draw. Halftime draw, aye. Or even like, film something with the, with the players to G them up. Or let you be the mascot for one week only. Aye. aye. Who is the mascot, Motherwell? Can you tell us that? Is it yeah. fucking Amber the fucking... <laughs> Amber the traffic light or something like that? Amber, Amber, Amber the traffic, traffic light. Claret the bottle of tonic. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it should be Claret the bottle of tonic. It's the mother of a mascot. Oh, but a steel hammer or something? No, it's steel hammer. Aye, maybe. Like Let's no, Google it. Do you know what it is? I, 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 I'm, I'm thinking there's like a... It's oh. a big bear. Not a teddy bear, clearly, because oh. that's Rangers, but I can see like a bear. A fox? Is it a fox? No, that's Leicester. No, this oh, is hey, you might be right. What it's an animal. What is that? No, it looks like a something for Toy Story. Is it Buzz Lightyear? Oh, <laughs> what is that? Right, I, don't, I would never have guessed that. No, one. you never guessed What's that. What's the name either. of that? Um, its name is Steelman. Oh, you weren't far it. off. Steelman. Steelman. You weren't far off. Steelman. It looks good though. Yeah. Quite right, the right, kids, you can see the kids on that. that mascot. Actually, they've what? actually put on a wee, but that's actually. Oh, it's like a superhero. It's not as if it's a wee snidey one for the most store. Do you know what I mean? I, no, it's a, I like oh. that. It's a proper, um, right. it's a proper superhero <laughs> costume. So, so we now know that Neil Motherwell fan up until 1992, <laughs> right? And then it stops because he knows nothing about the club now. Let's move on to Chris, who you kind of hinted at earlier that you. Grew up as a Rangers fan, or you were a Rangers well, fan? Well, my whole family, so I'm obviously Protestant, went to a Protestant school, and uh, grew, brought up just loving football. My dad was an Air United fan, all my uncle, my uncle Andy, my cousins Mark and Andy, they were massive Rangers fans, so I remember watching, like, I'm going to lose Twitter followers for this, I know it right, but anyway, I've only got five, but, <laughs> so, uh, I loved watching football, so I would go to Air United, uh, I've never been to Ibrox to watch a game, but my family watching, I remember watching uh, uh, Mark Hately scoring against Marseille, with that diving heater, mm -hmm. uh, back in the European Cup games when uh, they were playing like Marseille, AC Milan and... Leeds and all that. Leeds, side they beat Leeds. Leeds. So, and that was when I first realised that I loved football. Mm -hmm. So I would always, at family gardens, they would always be watching Rangers and that. And I, I'd never really kind of said either way, so I was always getting pelters for it. So it was just one day and... I changed, not changed, but I just said I'm, I'm Celtic. I read up and all the did, history, did and you, I loved it. I like being different. Game? Was it not a game you went? We'd, to wa like we'd watched the game. Like, I mean, and in uh, person. Like, did you, I, I, no, I looked up in the history first, and then I went to a game. I can't even mind who we were playing. No idea. It was some years and years ago. Some other team. Mate. I, I think it was a pre-season. I think it might have been Man City or something. Aye. Was that when he, years and years ago, before Man City had money? And that was that. And ever since, I've just been kind of hooked. And I get pelters for it all the time. Do you know what I mean? I was a Celtic supporting prod. I mean, so growing up, it was quite, I wouldn't say tough. I like being different. I like taking the pelters, but like yourself, mate. Aye. You, know, you, like you don't the like taking the pelters. Right, okay. He does not uh, like <laughs> taking the pelters. How, do you we, know I this? Spat well, we we fell right. out for about two days during Panto last Good. year. Massively. Because Rangers beat Celtic. Right, so. He, and I mean, proper oh, spat the dummy. And I don't get me wrong, he goes back by... Don't get me wrong, he eventually goes back because Celtic eventually won the league. Aye. And we were at, uh, you know, we'd signed, we think we won. It was the Defoe. It was Aye, we, we signed Defoe. Defoe. And he was slamming <laughs> doors. <laughs> and, but, but, and my defence. Right. We, and we were like, ah, Chris, calm down. <laughs> 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 oh, we're still winning the league, we're still winning the league. Fuck these, fuck these, fuck these, fuck these, fuck these, fuck these. We've got texts, why not? He was like, and it was like, fuck him, we're like, like, you know, that way it was bad. But it was bordering on personal insults. It was, it was bordering on. So I went out the Was it tension with the dressing? rooms oh, mega, yeah, mega 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 so what had happened was and i knew it was gonna happen we'd been beating them quite as you can say it was 12 right, games up, up until then right and then i thought the first time they're gonna beat us i guarantee it's gonna be stevie pudden and grado two of the most well-known rangers fans and i bet i can't handle it if we lose and they're there so i'm coming off right i'm coming off stage they've been watching because right, we still didn't know the i didn't know the score right i had to go on 
and I'm coming off, they know the result, and I'm coming off, and Grado and Stevie Puddins, dressed as birds, right, you know that. <laughs> okay, get out, get out. And then just come on, hello, boys and girls. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm doing the dressing room, but it wasn't, that wasn't when I snapped, that was close. You, they signed before, and obviously at the time I was in my head going, what a signing? But I wasn't going to tell them that. So I'm like, ah, he's too old, mate, and they're like, too fucking old. So, you know what they're like? The Aye. two of them are putting me, do you know what I mean? It was a nightmare. So I snapped, and he's sending me texts going, your tears are as sweet as Manuka, honey. <laughs> <laughs> do you like that? I don't remember that, but I Because we all use Manuka, honey, at panel for my throats. Yeah, yes. I, I, I was bored, like, but for a couple of days, it was, it was tense, wasn't it? Oh, it was, oh, aye. It was tense. It was. But I spat the dummy, and I will admit it, just like, Aye. But what I will say, mind that time, Hibs beat you and we were in Wagamama. I'm sat with Stevie oh, and, I and Hibs beat them last day. minute. Mm. And it was one of them, I'm just stuck with them and I didn't know where to go. So Aye, I that was, we were I right. stuck my head right mm. down and I never said nothing. So it annoyed me more when they won, they were right at me. But hey, but then, it's all funny games. what it's all about, do you know what I mean? It's about the banner at the end of the day, isn't it? That's that, exactly. And you leave yeah. at the door after a couple of days. That's and, that. Yeah, after a couple of days, we're about fucking... A couple of months for so, um, <laughs> so um, but, I mean, because um, Neil, who sat in the middle of you two, and there's a reason for that, because you two fucking fall out all the time. <laughs> um, Neil um, is, is a neutral in this debate when it comes to Celtic and Rangers, and it is a two-horse race for the championship. Uh, who do you think will win the title with your footballing knowledge uh, of the yeah, season? So bear in mind, you've got to wrestle him again, and bear in mind, you're working for me. So, obviously, Neil, you've been keeping up to date with what's happening this season and how things uh, are going. And Who is top of the league just now? It's Celtic. Oh, how many points? Four. <laughs> Three. Four. Three. Close. Well, I was close enough. Yeah. Oh. So who's winning the league, Neil? Uh, Hearts, you and I. Mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're I'm just not answering the question, <laughs> are you, Neil? <laughs> Neil, you're not answering the question, man. I'm just going to keep fucking asking until you give me an answer. I think uh, towards the end of this season, Celtic and Rangers are going to solve their differences. <laughs> <laughs> and combine into one super team, like Power wow. Rangers. So After watching the show? Yeah, no, they are going to come to see Billy and Tim too, and they'll go, ah, what's, what's all these differences <laughs> are about? And then they'll form like Voltron. And, uh, so that, and so the win. So do you know what you? At the end of the show is going to have big effect. Exactly. So do you know what you've just done there? Uh, you've actually made a bigger poo poo by suggesting that Celtic and Rangers combine as one super club, yeah. leaving all their traditions <laughs> and history behind, yeah. instead of choosing which one will win the league. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> they're just going to combine blue and green and mix into a nice earthy brown. <laughs> I'm telling you, I have solved hundreds of years of sectarianism <laughs> right in this podcast today. So I can't believe nobody's ever thought so of that. So basically, you're it saying... Took a, it took wait, wait, a non-fatba fan to come in and think about so this. So what you're <laughs> suggesting here today, Neil, is right. that Celtic and Rangers at the end of the season should come together as one football club, Aye. combine blue and green together to yep. make an earthy brown so they're going to be running around in a, a strip that looks like shit yep. and they're a super club. Yeah, I mean, look, it's it's just it's, I think it's. Daft. Are you hearing what you're saying? <laughs> I think it's silly all this like uh, Protestant versus Catholic king. When are folk can accept that you aren't as good as Jews? <laughs> 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 and you know what? I think we might just end that uh, right there. Uh, perfect. <laughs> perfect. perfect. So, uh, before we go, <laughs> right. guys, um, I, I, I need to see your show, and I know we'll be back I on the road again, but you've only got five shows to go. Where are you performing five again? Five shows we are performing. With so remember, this goes out in, remember, this is Thursday. It's goes out on Thursday, so we will be on Thursday. We'll be in our broth on Friday. Oh. We'll be... Uh, Johnson, Johnson Town Hall and then Saturday, Sunday East Cabride Village Theatre and we've got Gary Morrison as Billy and Zosha Zakolowitz as the nurse because I know you didn't want to say that name off the sheet <laughs> <laughs> I struggled with Bratchby's so. <laughs> uh, Neil, Chris it's been an absolute pleasure great fun fun right, thanks guys. so much for Honestly, coming in good, good, good luck with the show cheers guys It's the Football Dad Podcast, and it's a feature that you love the most about the show. It's time to reveal to you our mystery guest today. And how this works, if you're new to the podcast, is that Grado will come into the studio and he will be blindfolded, and he needs to try and identify the mystery guest that I have brought in. And for me, the mystery guest today is probably Scotland's most famous and well-known weather presenter that this country has probably ever produced. I can't think of someone who excites so many people every <laughs> single night on Report in Scotland and on the radio. Uh, and she's been a friend of mine for a number of years, and I'm delighted she's here today. It's the one and only Judith Ralston. Oh, baby, baby, how are you? <laughs> I'm great. Good. I'm delighted Good. you're here to do this. Oh, this is fun. Good fun. But you are, um, you are so well-loved and oh. liked and... And I mean, I'm not going to name the footballer that we're going to be interviewing <laughs> on the show very soon. 
Um, and, and, friend. The, and the next couple of weeks, he would like to be your friend. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you, you, you see it on social media. Yeah. I mean, people love you. And then just because you come across as someone, do you know what? I want to go for a drink with Judith. You know, you seem so approachable oh. and nice and friendly. Do you get that? Yeah, I, I guess at the end of the day, uh, you know, I'm kind of, I am what I am, you know. Um, you I don't have, change for anyone. No, I don't, I guess. And that's because I came into this since probably when I was older, so I was kind of secure in who I was anyway. You know, I wasn't some little young 21-year-old trying to prove myself in the world. I happened to almost kind of trip into this career um, and uh, the benefit of a career that I had before being an opera singer where it was very important to be who you were on stage to engage with your audience so I kind of um, was very happy in my own skin when, when I, I started working in television um, and I like people do you know you, I find people and I think you're the same everybody's got a story yes you know you've always got so, people have always got something interesting to tell yeah. you and uh uh, and I, that's, I'm just talking about normal people who are not in our kind of business. They, they are the more, most interesting people, actually. And I learned that skill, I think, from my dad. He was very charismatic and loved people. And a good yarn, he always used to say, like, a good yarn, you know. Let's <laughs> talk about Grado. Okay. Because you have been in Scott Squad. Yes, I have, yeah. Were you, were, were you in a scene with Grado? No, it wasn't. I was in uh, with um, Jordan, uh, Jordan Young. Jordan Young. And, um, oh, what's the lovely girl called? Not Sharon, um, Red here. The girl he's, he, he partners. Yes, in I can't remember her name yet. Yeah, she's fa- very, f- Sarah. Sarah, Sarah, yes. Yeah. So I was in a scene with them. And the funniest thing about the whole experience was it's unscripted. So you have an idea what the storyline is. And um, I turned up in the day and we're chatting away before we go into the set. And it was quite subdued, just like, ah, yeah. And I think Jordan just had a baby, so it was a bit like chatting about kids. Get onto the set and they turn into their characters. And I'm still me, standing there going, right, OK, what did I do now? So, uh, and you let the, uh, the in fact, luckily I had music college background, so I had a bit of impro, you know, experience <laughs> yeah. in my in my background, but I, just, I, well, I remember thinking I've just got to be myself, you know, and, and say, excuse me, you know, I've left my car keys in the car. Could, oh, any chance you could help me the way I would do it, you know, if I met a couple of policemen? <laughs> and you were so funny. Honestly, he had me in stitches. Um, so have you met Grado before? I have, yeah. But so Grado knows in, you? Yeah, I've met him at the BBC um, uh, and we've spoken and had a wee photo. And he's absolutely lovely. Warm so th- this, lovely. this is my fear because a couple of weeks ago we had such a well-known, recognisable voice on the show and Ian Crocker who does a commentary for Sky Sports oh, yeah, yeah. on Scottish football. And Grado got our mystery guest within a couple of minutes. My fear is because you've got such a well-known, recognisable voice from radio and from television that he may get who you are very quickly. And Ian wasn't very good at trying to disguise his voice. I'm hoping that you, Judith, have got a way to disguise your voice so that we can play this game a wee bit longer than just 30 seconds. Well... Have you got a few ideas up your sleeve that you could maybe try and throw him a wee bit? Put a wee spanner in the works? Definitely. I'm quite good at accents. Good, so can we, can we do some accents? Uh-huh, sure. So we'll keep that from Grado comes yep. in. So what's going to happen here? Grado's going to come in here. We're going to blindfold him. What he's going to do first, he's going to smell you. He's okay. Are you okay for Grado <laughs> to smell you? I smell of Chanel. <laughs> <laughs> Thank so, goodness. So by, by smell and by touching your hand, mm-hmm. he's going to determine whether you're a male or a female. And he's also going to have a wee guess at how old you are. Are you okay, okay with this? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go and get Grado, we're going to blindfold him and we're going to bring him into the studio because we're about to play Who Are You with one of Scotland's premier weather presenters, probably the best ever. It's the one and only Judith Ralston. How is this going to go? Let's find out. So here we are, we're back with Who Are You on the Football Daft Podcast. Grado is now sat here with a blindfold on next to our mystery guest who he has to try and identify. And as always with this, Grado, I know you always get a wee bit worried. It scares you a wee bit. What scares you about this feature that is Uh, really popular? In case I offend them, in case I touch something I shouldn't. uh, (laughs) Are you also, because over the, 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 the months that we've been doing this, we, you've removed the blindfold and you've not recognised the people you should recognise. Oh, yeah. That's quite embarrassing. I know. I know there is nothing well, worse. I, I, Especially when, when I'm like, oh, we did Kenny Char, but your names went right in my head. Right. I'm bad with names. Okay. So should we start? Aye. You ready? First Aye. things first is always, Grado, you need to lean to your left right. and give the mystery guest a smell. Right. <laughs> See, because I put hands as a scoot on myself there because I was out for a snout, so I'm kind of paranoid. So I don't. I don't know if I'm picking up. Oh, I don't. Oh, man, you've washed your hair this morning. <laughs> you did. Perhaps. 
<laughs> I may have watched it last night. Right, so it's a Russian woman. <laughs> Don't care many Russians. Eastern European. Oh no! <laughs> What's the rang with that? One minute. But it's not. You put. Hold on. Right, so this is why I get scared. You know what I mean? The goose flies west from Yinsk. So I have to go that way, that west. <laughs> No, stay what? Stay there? Stay, stay there on the stay shoulder. Stay. Yeah. Stay there. Right. Oh, I like your hair. So you th- what do uh, you think? A male or female? Uh, female. Definitely going with female, yeah? Uh, is that hair boy? Uh, that's no that's no Avon stuff, huh? That's your good uh, VO5 plus VO5 equals 10. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they, you think they use they use VO5 shampoo? Oh, they're, they're nice ha- oh. <gasps> hands. Oh. Hands. Oh, smooth. Pair of paws. <laughs> mm-hmm. These paws can do a lot. Mm-hmm. Right. And oh. <laughs> <laughs> they have fed many children. <laughs> As, uh, uh, so what are we going with? Male, female? Geez. We're going with yeah. female. How old is a female? I see that's when I'm feeling to be offensive. I'm you should be. Thirties, in your thirties. In your thirties. So you fet- think it's a female in their thirties and from Eastern Europe? Yes. Now you must ask the mystery guest. Questions. Would <coughs> you have your breakfast this morning? <laughs> I had cheese and crackers. Oh, did you put a park on it? No. No? Mayonnaise. Mayonnaise with your crackers and cheese? Oh, I might try that myself. I never did that. It's always it's an park. Eastern European tradition. Oh, did it. <laughs> <laughs> Please say you're putting on an accent because I'm not getting into Eastern I might Europe. be. Right. <laughs> So ask questions, Grado. I mean, right. I mean, obviously this is football. Do you get to do with football? No. Right. No Are high you pressure. A singer. Ah. Oh I my God! I just got a wee feel. I used to be a singer. Yeah. I used to be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're not only some European dollar parton. <laughs> can, can you? I tell you? No. I can feel the heat coming through some bosoms. <laughs> I'm not going to say that. You're, I don't not, know. you're not wrong. <laughs> so you think that you have a singer with a singer, a singer, right? So we've got a singer, right? I oh, see. I'm not touching any male now. Right, that's it. We're I don't done now. Touch. I don't no, touch. right. Okay, that's that done. So you think you've got a singer here? Right, a singer. Do you think it's a singer? Are you a singer? I used to be. Were you in a band? No. Were you solo artist? Yes, yes, solo artist of classical type. Oh, and where are you playing Glasgow? Uh, I sang opera. What? I oh, sang I'm opera. Oh my God, I, I used to sing opera. Uh, the only opera singers I can is Pavarotti, the blind one, and the woman that sings with the blind one. <laughs> <laughs> Time to... Do I, do I give him clue? She Time to say... Da, da, di, da, da, di. Grado, um, I'm going to tell you something about our mystery guest. Right. You know this person. Right. You've met this person. Right. This person has been in a TV show that you're in. <gasps> glasses! She's got glasses. <laughs> a woman with a tele show that's in glasses and she sings in Eastern Europe. Well, she's not for Eastern European. Right, you're on a tele show. Right, she's, right. On, she's on the telly. Well, every, you, she's, on, a, she's on the telly most nights. Oh! Most nights she's on the telly and she's been on one of your programs. No, she done. Mm, getting warm. More important than your radar. Ah, oh. <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> some high pressure coming your way, baby. <laughs> Fred Tauber. <laughs> <laughs> Low pressure now. <laughs> Judith Ralston! <laughs> is that your answer? That's my answer, Judith Ralston. It's Judith Ralston! Yeah! <laughs> yes! I did! Well done, well that done. That was a good one. <laughs> as soon as you said, only telly every night. <laughs> oh! 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 Are you happy? You're look, looking great. Oh, it's always good to bum into Judith Ralston, man. <laughs> Oh, are, are you are you are you a fan? What? Are you a fan? Very big fan of her work. <laughs> Very big fan of her work. Very big fan of her work. As I say, I like to aye aye. Scott Squad. That's right. I was wondering if it was maybe something to do between No, get in there. <laughs> Oh, no, that's good, isn't it? You're very good. Yeah. I like you. I like, I like you. you. Very good. I like you. You need wife? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
What? <laughs> <laughs> so you two have met before. Yes, yeah, right. yeah. That. yeah. Always bumping each other now and again, yeah, didn't we? BBC, mm, BBC yeah. we bump yeah. each other and stuff like that. That lovely face. I see. Hi, and she's taking a couple of selfies because obviously I'm plastered. Really, the BBC Scotland <laughs> was when she. Unlike was. me. So she sees me, she sees me every morning, didn't you? I do. Ten to four in the morning. There's where's my boy. Look eh, ah, see, I'm not tidy. <laughs> oh, I'm delighted with that. Um, favorite weather presenter? Ah, uh, so I like Sean too. <laughs> <laughs> He's fabulous. He's the real deal as well. Hey, by the way, Andy's he's he's been working it. I know. Ah, he's been working it. I know. Just take a few. We could learn a few things. Let's <laughs> 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 get into his little aerobics class. Ah, yes, no. See, see, last time I seen him, man, he's fucking some he's set of airs on him. Ripped. Ah, he's ripped. He's ready to go, man. Judith, for me, is the best on the BBC. Oh, I, I would actually say she's the best woman at the BBC <laughs> overall. The best woman. Ever. Well, who else is there? Gillian Smart's good. She's my best mate. Is she on, what's she a news reader? She's a, yeah, she's a weather presenter as well. Yeah. Or do you my... split it in between the two? Yeah. I mean, what's um, the girl that's from... How do you split your nights, right? Say you want to go a night out, do you go, can you do it? Oh, yeah, we do. <laughs> Is that how you, Jillian is it, and I do a lot of that stuff. Is that how you do yeah. it? So, so did he get a schedule to start Yeah, we've got a schedule. And right. if, if quite often, I mean, I, I've got two kids, I've got to juggle them and whatnot. Uh, so we'll kind of help each other out and, and sort of try and swap around. That's amazing. I'd love to be. So see how, let me ask you this. Uh-huh. Do you actually need to, like, did you have to go to university and all that, do geography and all no, that shit? No, no, no. And I think that's the beauty of what I do. I think the most important So you don't know what you're skill. talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Rain, rain, <laughs> rain, rain. Well, there's nothing much. Right. And yeah. do you get a buzz when there's like they say it's sunny? Do you go? Oh, 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 I do. You know, last week was fantastic. Was yeah. it 25 degrees? And I was really excited to tell the nation Aye. we're in for a crack in a few days. Let's let's em- embrace it because we, we do love it when it's like that, and so we appreciate it. Which which what, 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 what kind of shifts do you do? Well, the last I did late shifts. I started at one and finished at eleven. So <laughs> hold on for the job. Right, sh- so you're on for f- a ten hour shifts. 40 seconds. Uh-huh. What are you doing the rest well, of the day? Sitting on Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> Tweeting. I think a lot of people wonder, do you think we just rock up and read the weather? Read the weather. Aye, but this is what I want to know. Tell yeah, me. Yeah, exactly. Well, first of all, we don't read it. We do it all from memory. So Really? Yeah, we was there no water queue? And is no, it, no is it always live as well? It, yes, it is. Do you, yeah. do you prefer doing that to... Re- 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 do you know what I mean? Do you find it comes more yes, natural? Yes, uh-huh. I do. I find actually recording something I always me. I was oh, look, we do it again. I make a mistake, Aye. but when I'm doing it live, you've if you make a mistake, you cover you it. Go, <laughs> keep going. Yeah, you just keep going. So, have you ever done it on there that, that you've gotten in trouble for? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Aye, aye, I, fell, I fell out of shot the other day. <laughs> I've got a sore knee, and um, I turned round um, and I was standing, and it was at the end of an early shift. So I've been aye. in since four that morning. This was like twenty to two in the afternoon, and I literally. Stumbled and I fell out the camera, shot and put a <laughs> myself up and started to laugh. You did know? you get to laugh? No, well, I, my boss questioned me on it, but she didn't give me an eye. Well, but she yeah, just gone out of you last what? night. <laughs> 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 I was just, I'd been out at lunchtime, I just come back in. I'm delighted with this one, And I've had a wee, um, I've had a, there was a, a Christmas Eve, I remember, I was talking about <laughs> high pressure sinking south. And I said, um, and you've got this heat, heat of high pressure and it's going to shit shout. <laughs> 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 and, and I didn't laugh. I was like, don't laugh, don't laugh, don't laugh. And there was one night I was on with Jackie Bird, lovely old Jackie, not old Jackie, lovely Jackie, I should say. <gasps> so she was on and I was standing waiting to go near at the very last broadcast of the day. And that was like, at that point, it was 20 to 11 at night. Uh. And... Uh, I was looking at the picture behind me, talk, you know, we had these weather watchers pictures, and I was thinking, oh, how does to describe that? Because I never know what I'm going to say until I start. And I, th- and I, I looked at it and I thought, gosh, it reminds me of that programme my mum used to love, Dr. Finley's case book. Yes, yeah. So, and I was thinking, that's quite nice, because a lot of our audience would remember that. Yeah, so I thought, right. uh, uh, thanks very much, Jackie. I said, and look at this lovely picture sent in by one of our weather watchers. It just puts you in mind of Dr. Finley's Facebook. <laughs> 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 and Jackie started cracking up. And that was me. The way through, I've got <laughs> at one point I went, Jackie, stop laughing. <laughs> so, all the way through, I'm talking to the weather like this. <laughs> and then at the end, Jackie's shaking her head and she's still laughing. And we've had a few laughs like that, you know. There's nothing better than the good fun, you, you know. Yeah, there's so, nothing better than live TV. Do you, the the do buzz you get from it. Aye, that's good. Do you get to, um, so do you send in, so see how if there's like somebody in Ireland and all that, <laughs> yes. and go, I, I've got a good picture of goat fell with snow on it. Yeah. Do you just want that? Yeah, they send it in through the weather watchers. Right. But quite often, I mean, Scotland's got the best pictures, I think. Like my colleagues down south have got to use it other parts of the world, but certainly the Scottish ones are by far the, the, the most yeah, beautiful. I'm pure interested, right? Do you get like weather geeks that folk that oh, love yeah. the weather? Do you know, it's yeah. folk that love planes and all that. Do you get folk that just love like, uh-huh. snow and all that? Mm-hmm. Aye. You do. You get the same people sending in yeah. all the time, and I guess a bit, it's been getting a wee bit competitive. Borderline. Oh, competitive, <laughs> aye. You've hey, a picture, picture for a while. Aye, <laughs> aye, aye, all that. 
You wouldn't think of that. You're surprising me with your line of questioning here, Grado. No, because the I, detail that you're going into here. Yeah. Yeah. People are interested. No, I'm right. I, I like to know because you. I'm, just, I'm, I'm surprised because I was I would not have known this of you. I know, I know I'm getting better at it. It's no, but you're you're, you're intrigued. A weather watcher. Aye. Well, I want to say a weather watcher because well, who's saying that? Where I live at? Uh, I'll just, get you on here. Uh, would you be we an ordinary again? Which oh, Greedo? There's <laughs> 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 Greedo sent in this lovely Can picture I do of that? Templeton. <laughs> see how see how the likes are like out my out my side of my back door. There's of cows now, right? Uh-huh, I mean absolutely. cows as in. I like animal pictures. I right. use them a lot. Right. So and like you can just see Aaron in the background and all. So. So if you send, if send them some that, pictures, would you, would you be able to put it on? Yes, of course, especially. If send it to me. Try and get it in the next week. So, so if, if you've got a lov- if you've got a lovely sunset and some cows in a field, we or a wee bit of rain or something, yeah, just yeah, okay. oh, let's do that. That'd be good. And then next week we can see if we've used it or not. <laughs> right. Can I put under that kind of pressure? I we can. <laughs> no, you can't. Eh? When you're next week, who's your gaffer? I'll give get your gaffer. I'll give my phone. I'll do it. I'm on a Sunday night and then I'm on early Tuesday, late Wednesday, Thursday. Right, well, I'm half on Sunday. I'll be sitting out at the back door. I'll take about 40 pictures. You can pick. <laughs> so, you, Judith, Chris. this is a Football Daft podcast. I'm just yeah. curious, do you, are you a fan of football? Well, I, uh, you know when you first meet somebody and you go, yeah, I love football. I did that with my husband. Right. So I'm now a Motherwell fan. Oh, a Motherwell <laughs> And I have been for donkey's years. We are we're Motherwell fans in our family. Uh, uh, and I'll go to the occasional match. Um, and I, I follow them, you know, I follow them to, to see how they're getting on, and I'm kind of uh, committed for it. I know uh, my husband is a huge Motherwell fan. He broke away from the Glasgow, uh, the Celtic Rangers thing. His family were involved, you know, they, there was bickering going on at mm-hmm. his granddad's Growing up and with all it, that. Yeah, yeah. And he said, fair. right, I'm not going to do that. I love football. And he just took himself off, him and his brother, and started to support Motherwell. So while the family continued to bicker about Celtic yeah, and uh-huh. Rangers, he got out of it and went, I'm going to be a Motherwell fan. And he, you know, he works, he works away, right? right so he works away, but he I'm has sure. a season ticket. So he's still coming, you know, tries to get back as much as possible. And he's, he is a really committed fan. Um, my eldest boy goes with him uh, as well. He's also a committed fan. So oh, that's good. It is, because they're not a small family team, aren't they? And that's what I like about them. Uh, and I go along occasionally. Um, there's a lot of kids there mm-hmm. and I like that you know Aye. although I'm from I was born within a a swim through of Tynecastle so were you? Yeah, Aye. so was you, was you brought up supporting the team? no no not really, not really my no. dad was away at sea so right. I, my mum wouldn't have been known you know clearly away to Tynecastle and yes, everything is in Gorgie Road because uh, a lot of the local kids went to Tiny that's right did you go to Tiny? To, no I went to St Augustine's why did you do that? because I'm Catholic <laughs> 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 You? I'm allowed to say that. A Roman Catholic. <laughs> I sang for the Pope as well. <laughs> did, did you? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Did you? Go on, yeah. John Paul. John Paul. Ah, like young you? people of Scotland. When oh, he visited? Yeah. Oh, wow. Mm, I didn't did. know that. Yeah, I learned something new about you. school, yeah. All oh, right. How old would you have been then when you sang uh, for the Pope? I think I was about 14. What did you sing? Um, I Ash. sang to <laughs> <laughs> uh, I sang a hymn. And then we went to, we were at Murrayfield, then we went through to um, Bella Houston. There was a programme just there, I thought, on BBC, you seen it, Inside the Vatican. I started watching it last Ooh, night, it's quite interesting. It? And it's about opera singers that have came for, what are you looking at? He's um, cultured, you, see, we would, his, no, Nato, his, his, you, his, you would be a terrific date. Because the f- conversation would flow. Oh, there's nice stuff. Look at that. Full Talking kind of about Vatican then. culture. I love that. It means you've uh, got, you know, an open mind. You're learning. Are you're they? prepared to sort of, you know. Except everyday. anybody. There's romance going on here. <laughs> 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 I'm looking for, especially that you think I'm in my 30s. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I hope your man, I hope your man's not listening. Oh, he's fine. <laughs> no, he's away. He's, he he's inside. Park? No, I don't. <laughs> Where at the jail? He works away. <laughs> Uh, right. um, Grady, you're smitten. No, Judith's I'm brilliant. Smitten. Judith's he's smitten. Brilliant. He's smitten. I can look at him. Ah, no, Judith's great. You, you, you don't want me to say cheerio, do you? No, let's keep going. <laughs> <laughs> did you actually put mayonnaise in your crackers and cheese? <laughs> <laughs> I did. I like me. I love it. Do you like mayonnaise? I do. I actually think there's something in this with you two because you're so opposite and so different, but also at the same time very alike. Aye, what I like. It's quite weird, isn't it? It's no weird. But that's that's it's natural. Great. No, but I look at it too. Is I wouldn't put you two together, not as in like a couple, uh-huh. but like as in friends and having similar likes and interests. Uh-huh. But mm-hmm. it would appear as though you two are getting on like a house on fire. Anyone that's watched the Vatican program is a friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> no, you should get on it. I fell asleep during it, but I'm going to watch it. <laughs> 
<laughs> right, Cradle, you come and spend a week with me and I'll spend a week with you. <laughs> me there. and the kids. Me and the kids. There. Bring the wins. Bring the wins. <laughs> and let me ask you, Judith, do, do you like the attention that you get? <laughs> no, I'll because be there's, you, you know, do know you're aware of it. Right. You can't not, not be aware of it. I mean, guys absolutely adore you. Or get you. Some, some weird ones. There you get weird uh, tweets. Yeah, uh-huh. A lot of, this is the most common one of late. It's been, so tell me about yourself. Aye. What am I going to say to that? Aye. Aye. You Aye. Know? Have you ever had to block him? I don't like yeah, that. Yeah, pictures mm. and things like that. Oh, oh I yeah. can imagine. I've been sent underwear. Yeah. Uh, right, I'll be. be <laughs> what, what What's I, your address? <laughs> What's your address? <laughs> and something. I, I also got sent a back massager, a massive one. Oh, what right. What can be yeah. the name of my <laughs> <laughs> I gave it to my boss. I said, you might want to deal with this. <laughs> so, uh, do you know, it's really funny because actually I don't pay much attention to it because I I'm, I'm really busy with my kids. But occasionally I see stuff. And do you know the best thing I like is when women talk to me? Because they, and I do get, I, I have quite a lot of maybe DMs from women because I see, I feel they see, don't see me as a threat. I'm one of them and Aye, I am. The I'm a sister. Door. Yeah, I'm a sister. I'm not, you know, I'm for women and, you know, and kind of support the sisterhood and all that. Um, but I, I, but do, when I do stumble across stuff, do, sometimes I laugh. I do look, I, obviously I glance through stuff every day, I have a quick look Aye. and reply to some things and whatnot, yeah. but, uh, you know. Uh, you just ignore the and, stuff. And, and again, like you know, at the, mid, the end of the day, I'm a middle-aged mother of three <laughs> and that's how I see, I see myself. You know, don't, you know, I'm he- well held in by a good pair of pants. It's not <laughs> <laughs> it's, I'm not under the slinky underwear, there's no slinky underwear underneath me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so I would say that to, to, to the girls, you know. I thought you said you got to say that to your tweetles. Uh, <laughs> you'll find out when you move in. <laughs> you're hanging my washing up. <laughs> so, um, Judith, you're, um, you've are you been doing the weather for a number of uh, years now. Uh-huh. Any other big ambition for Judith Ralston? Because um, um, you've got a great sense of humour, got a great personality, you've got a great smile, you're lovely to be around. Oh. I think the, the thing that's going on here with you and Greed, I think there's something in that. Well, we I could host a show together. Be, be BBC yeah. producers could get involved you know, with this. It's funny because I've never because I've, I'm so concentrating the children and whatnot. Mm. And I'm, How old are I, your kids? Uh, Seventeen and twins of eight. Oh really? So a bit um, of a gap. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so uh, no sex for all that time. <laughs> 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 it was my brother. See how honest is she? Love it. My husband's birthday. <laughs> totally <laughs> steaming twins. <laughs> well, it was the result of a holiday. Like, oh, actually. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> we just tell it all. <laughs> but you know, that's what happened when we had two boys. I've got a 20 year old and an 18 year old. I've now got a 10 year old. Why? Because I went to Paris for a weekend <laughs> and I came and we played a drink game. No, we, we, <laughs> we had a drinking game. We had a yeah. drinking game and I woke up with just a pair of socks on. <laughs> and then um, a couple of months down the road, Teresa says, I'm pregnant from that night out in Paris. And I, wouldn't sh- <laughs> I, wouldn't, I think it's common. I wouldn't they swap. Josh uh-huh. for the world, uh-huh. but at the time it was a shock. Yeah. It no, was, was a shock. shock. Oh, we yeah. just were so excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I lost the drinking game. I lost the oh, drinking game. Right, right, right. Yeah, it's all for Mrs. Cameron. <laughs> so, um, yeah, because she wanted another child and I didn't. But um, yeah. yeah, there you go. It's so, we, funny. It's so, funny. So, so, you've um, got twins? I've got twins. And uh, sadly, I lost a wee girl years oh. ago, but that was she was a twin. Oh, so, right. that was oh, my really? second twi- set oh. of twins. Well, that's nice. So it was meant to be yeah, there, wasn't it? Was yeah, it was, it was. And yeah. my eldest boy, is, um, he's now really an adult, you'll know yourself, yeah. and he's, he's great fun, actually. Aye. We have a really good relationship. A good laugh, a good laugh. Yeah, he's turned well, into a Here's the thing that I'm interested in, is that my older boys, because my wife doesn't look her age, and she's a good-looking woman, like yourself, Judith. Thank you. Does, <laughs> does your son... Is he, uh, he's clearly aware of, of the attention that you get, and that there's a lot of um, people out there who... Um, admire you, fancy you, like, like Penrice you. situation. Yeah, like what we had James Penrice right. in a couple of weeks ago, the footballer who's got a good looking mum. <laughs> is your son aware of it? Is he is he comfortable with that? He's aware of it. Aware of it. Yeah, I, no, certainly. Um, is he comfortable with that? He is. He is now. I think he's adult enough to kind oh, of be. He gets it's just a kid. Aye. Uh-huh. Aye. And he's now a bit. But like, did he go through a wee while where he was like, Mom. well. <laughs> Yeah, mum, mum, stop talking to people, mum, mum. You know, you get embarrassed, and um, and there was a few comments at school like, "See your ma, <laughs> see your ma when she's on the telly." <laughs> and this, some older boys at school giving it. I turned on the part in Scotland to watch your ma. <laughs> Material in the bank for weeks. <laughs> I quote, unquote. 
So he, he's, <laughs> but um, he's. <laughs> But that's that's true. That's exactly what happens with teenage boys. If you've got someone who's in the public eye mm-hmm. and is going to be yeah, and if you and if you're a good looking man or woman, and you're going to get that kind of thing at school. But the funny thing I have now is, um, is that I think my fan base is uh, the older generation. Says, oh, my granddad loves you. <laughs> 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 you saw my uncle, my granddad. You know, Judith Ralston, Scotland's premier weather presenter. It has been an app. Absolute pleasure. That was definitely one of my favourite guests. You like well, that? Aye. Happy with that one, Grado? Dynamite. Uh, and you got it as well. Dynamite. Got Dynamite. it as well. Dynamite. Well done, darling. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, Judith, thank you. It's a pleasure. And it's now time for our Beer 52 match of the week. Congratulations to Rangers supporter Mikey Smith, who correctly guessed the two. One result in the Edinburgh Derby to win that case a beer. This week, our B52 match of the week is Rangers versus Aberdeen. So to win, all you need to do is guess the correct score before midday on Saturday. Everybody that gets the right score will win to a draw to win the beer. And hey, it's easy to enter. Just comment on the link in the Football Daft Facebook page or tweet your score to at Football Daft using the hashtag FreeBeer on Twitter. Winners, you need to be 18 and over and stay in the UK. Um, You're not bad, actually, for a presenter. You're getting better. I am. I was, looking, getting, I, I was looking at you going, yeah, I, mean, I, was, I, can see, I can sense you going, you're doing no bad. You're doing no bad, mate, because you've, you've got better since we started this. Well, always and up. I, I think um, one day you could actually sit here and actually present the show. Um, so all you need to do is go to the website, beer52.com forward slash, slash dad. Aye, see, let me do it. All you need to do <laughs> is go to www.beer52.com slash daft and we can sort out eight beers if you just cover the four ninety five for the postage. And as an added bonus for the Football Daft listeners, you can get two extra free beers. Hey, so that's a total of ten free beers. Your first box will be sent next day delivery. How tidy is that now waiting about uh, and it will contain beer from all over Europe it's a monthly subscription for the service so the Beer 52 company they're not going to hold you to ransom you can leave at any time you don't need to go through any hassle we try and stop it if you don't like the service but I don't think you will dislike the service because again I tend to create a Beer 52 uh, beers with me doing the train to London last week and a tan free forum and they were just delightful so just go to www.beer52.com slash staff to get your first case of the 10 beers for free that's www.beer52.com slash staff and you and his raging because I'm getting fucking better than him at this <laughs> That's it for the Football Daft Podcast with Ewan and Grado. Thank you so much for all our guests for appearing on the show today. Judith Ralston. Brilliant. She loves you. Hey, do you know what? And we're going to work together. I just know it. And thanks to the guys from Singing I'm No Billy. He's a Tim Part 2. It is uh, still on tour. Uh, check out the website for details if you want to get some tickets to go and see the guys. Also, thanks to the fans from Hearts and Hips for coming on the show again to give us their opinions on the Edinburgh Derby. And uh, before we go, thank you for listening, as we always do, and we appreciate your support. And um, We do love to hear from you. So if you could go onto the Apple Podcast site, if you, if you listen to us on the Apple Podcast, Drop us a review. Right, so we can a good one. A, 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 whatever you think. Oh, how you feel. Yeah, how you feel. And we'll read it out on the show. Right, so and, we'll, and put your name down on it. And we'll give you a wee shout out. Mm-hmm. We'd love to hear from you. So we've picked out a couple of reviews on, right. on the Apple on the Apple podcast. So for example, one of the reviews here is from Bob Baldi's son. He gives us five stars. He says, great banner worth a listen, folks. Get on to it. Our Gredo will punch your lights out. Ha, 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 ha. It's yourself, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. We then have a review from Kyle F97. He gives us a one star and he proclaims, these guys are two freaks. This podcast will give you cancer by listening to it. <laughs> Kyle, Kyle F97. Don't. Don't say what you're going to say. He's no worth it, mate. He's no worth it. He's mute. N- yeah. We're muting you. We're blocking you. Gredo. You must hear. You couldn't help yourself. You couldn't help yourself. Cradle, guess what? You've you, been daft. You've been football. It's yourself. Remember that. <laughs>